quick mind. Thank you and good evening councillors and welcome to the Finance and Operations Committee for the 11th of May 2020. We, the Vanilla Rural City Council, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to elders from other communities who may be here today. Uh, I'll call for apologies. Bill, no apologies. Uh, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting have been circulated. Councillor Davis has moved that. Do I have a second to Councillor Gunneratney? All those in favour? It's carried. Uh, governance matters. This committee meeting is conducted in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020 and the Benalla Rural City Council Governance Rules 2020. In accordance with the Government's Rules 2020 Clause 6.4, meetings of the Council will be audio recorded and made available for the public. Councillors are reminded of their behaviour within the Council meeting. And in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020, a councillor must declare any conflict of interest uh, to Section 130 of the Act at any time. Uh, and they must identify whether it is a general or material. Are there any councillors declaring a conflict of interest? Councillor Gunnar Ratney. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would like to declare a con general conflict of interest for the item uh, item three, that is. Sorry, item four, annual grant program and major event funding program. Uh, I'm a management committee member of Benalla Migrants Association and the uh, preschool uh, management committee. Thank you, Councillor Gunnar. So I would like to. Uh, yep, we will action that when we yes, get to that item. Thank you. Are there any other councillors declaring? No. Thank you. Uh, business item one is public question time. We have none. Thank you. And item two is the financial report for the quarter end 31 March 2020. And I hand it over to Cathy Fitzpatrick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 31st of March 2022. Result uh, is outlined in this uh, report. It, it also aligns with the um, forecast result that we have put out on public comment for our. Um, proposed budget for next year. So uh, if you've read the figures once before, that's because you've read the figures once before. Um, but I'm happy to say at the end of March, uh, we had a surplus as shown in table one, which um, table one provides a breakup of both the revenue and expenses for the forecast for the um, period to the end of 31st of March and also for the forecast to the end of the year. And throughout that table, I've provided notes um, on each item, but the highlight I think is that uh, we're in a positive situation for our revenue and we're also in a positive situation for our operating expenses, which means we're ahead at the moment by 3.5 million um, on our forecast figures. The forecast to the end of the year, I should say, um, is impacted significantly by the FAGS um, grants, which will, which will be and have been um, paid in advance, which was 75% of next year's allocation for the federal system grants um, have been paid. It's on page 11, item 4. Um, it outlines the additional money we received, which is why we've come up with a higher forecast result. So we've received $2.2 million of next year's allocation in the current year, and... Um, We've had an early payment of the roads allocation as well, 1.2. So when this was written, it was not received at that stage, but soon after the 31st of March, we received the payment, um, which aligned with the forecast. So that results in us having a, a better re return in the current year, but in the next year, we don't get that money. But it's always better to have money in the bank than um, be waiting for someone to pay you. So I think that's a, a, a positive. Uh, as you go through the report, you'll see that there's a number of ups and downs. We've been greatly impacted this year by um, grants and the expenditure of grants, and also we have been restricted on the delivery of some of the program because of the COVID restrictions as well. So there have been a number of ups on things and a number of downs because we haven't been able to um, deliver the program at the time. But the forecast overall is that we're trying to deliver the program for 21-22 as much as we can and any carry forwards have been impacted. In the current year, we recognise unearned grants 
if we haven't actually completed the work, they go down as a liability on the balance sheet and so they're not recognised in the income in that year. It's attributed to the next year when we actually complete the capital works. So it's a bit like matching, but in operational spending, um, when you, you get the grant, if there's not a performance criteria, you have to recognise that grant. So in some things, we'll, we will not have spent all the money in the year that we receive it, and we may acquit that grant in the next year by spending the money in the next year to um, align with what we thought we provide to the provider of the grant. I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, we've, we've obviously gone through this number of times with the um, budget, and um, there's a, a very detailed breakdown throughout this report. And there's also an attachment um, that, that will explain the materials and services in Appendix 1 that shows you the movement between um, actuals and budgets. And there's only a difference of 91.5K, which is pretty low, but there's some big swings and ups and downs throughout that item. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Cathy. Councillor Claridge. Yeah, thanks, Cathy. Um, just some clarification on page 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, item number three, user grants, and then the forecast. I presume one is the current year to date, and the next one is the um, is the is the forecast results. And just concerning the EPA levy, there's three different figures. One is 385, 338, which is current year to date. I presume the next one is 505, mm -hmm. and then in the appendix, it's. Uh, it appears as 704470. It's item number 51. IE 51, yeah. Um, it could well be that there's an accrual from the, we paid the EPA three months after um, we collect the funds, so we don't pay the 30th of June figure until the the August figure, sorry, until three months after. So we pay the September amount that we owed them at the 30th of June as a payment and it will have gone through as an accrual is what I'd suggest. Um, and the EPA levy may well be that it's it's hasn't adjusted for the amount that we had at the end of March for a higher figure. There were a number of... Um, items brought through the the gate at the um, landfill that had EPA levy attached to them that was a direct pass on straight just EPA levy and not in our volumes for our um, waste collection. So I, I'd put it down to that, it, the forecast. You're, you're seeing the actual in the budget, you're not seeing the forecast on that <coughs> back um, materials and services. So which figure will be the actual figure? I'd say the actual, will be, the 550 will be the difference between what was was the original figure and the forecast. So the budget will be 550 up higher, not um, 720. I can't tell you what the oh, okay. the IE <clears throat> code for that particular item was for the. Um, we have to pay for no choice. It's an absolute pass on. Mm. Councillor Davis. Well, thank you, Cathy. You might want to take this question on notice. Um, it's good to have all these rosy figures in and being in a, in a pos positive um, position at this stage. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our money appears when I go through the, the books. A lot of our, our money is is, um, is annexed out for projects, like it's road money or it's this money or it's that money. Is it possible to be able to run another line item with? The money that's been given to us in grant funding mm -hmm. so that I can actually work out how we're actually trading. Do you know what I mean? So like the all the money at the moment gets lumped into, into the bank and we're showing positive for XYZ, three, three million or in, in, in credit in, in the bank, which is great. But when I take out our road funding and I take out um, everything else, project money like across the road and this money and that money and grant funding that, that hasn't been spent and, and money that's going to be carried over because of projects we won't be able to complete before the end of the June. I, I have trouble actually finding out 
where we're, where, where exact net position is. Is that is that too hard? Is that really hard? No, um, you have operating grants. Yes. And and non-operating grants. Yeah. And you have capital grants and non-recurring capital grants. And we have unearned income sitting at 6.30, which we projected at the end of the year will have no unearned income because it will go as a liability on the balance sheet if it's yeah. not earned. Look, I might make the time to come and sit down with yeah, you. So that's okay. It's only my own benefit. Thank you. So if you have a look at the budget, the, the forecast balance sheet is in the budget and the forecast cash position is in the budget as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Gunnar Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Ms. Patrick, for the good report and a lot of things explained by itself. <clears throat> now, the question I have is from the North 6 on page 12. The grants that we wouldn't recognize in this year and we uh, roll over to the next financial year. The receiving information said the redevelopment $936,143. What are the milestones and how much is allocated to each milestone for us to recognize uh, in the next financial year? Will be delivered? What are the deliverables so the money attached to? Thank you. Um, I'm, I can't give you the milestones on a specific grant because I don't administer the grant. Um, I'm happy for the question to be taken on notice. It's more a capital um, projects question than a um, revenue question. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from Council? Councillor Clary. Yeah, look, I do have one more. Could you explain to me what the local government business concierge and hospitality support progr program was? Or is? So, yeah. Yep, that one sits through um, Adam's area um, <laughs> and is associated with a program. We received money in the prior year and we received. I might okay. Yeah, I take that one? It just. Um, just through the chair, it was um, it was in two parts actually, councillor. The first um, the first initiative came out. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say six months ago. I'll say six months for a lot of things. It was probably even longer to be quite honest. Uh, about sixty thousand uh, dollars through the state government, and it was to put a resource into each council area to work with businesses to disseminate information specifically related to COVID and the recovery and all of the uh, all the services that were available. They then extended that program uh, towards the end of last year by another thirty odd thousand dollars. That particular program is set to be completed by I think thirtieth of June uh, this year. Um, we have been fortunate that that money has allowed us to employ someone that has been working in that space uh, for probably nine months now, maybe a little bit longer to be quite honest. And if we didn't have that money, that resource wouldn't have been available to our community. And they have been disseminating information to the business community and doing other economic development activities um, in accordance with the grant agreements. But it was a, it was a welcome um, uh, grant funding and um, the money has been um, used um, you know, across the region as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clary. And if there's no further questions, the recommendation is on page 17. If I can have someone move it, Councillor Davis and Councillor Hearn. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Davis? Yes, correctly. Cathy, what a wonderful report. It's um, very very simple to read. Um, I get a bit confused because in my term in council, I've never seen so much grant funding come to us. So, you know, we've got so many projects on the go at the moment, so much money has come from different state and federal governments. It's, it's fantastic and uh, I keep up the good work, but I'm just a bit amazed at the moment I'm trying to balance it, balance all the money at the moment. But, but it's good that we're, kind of, we're cash positive at the moment. But um, I don't hear you keep your uh, hand on it all, but... Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Is anyone against the recommendation? No? Councillor Hearn, do you wish to speak? No, thank you. Any other councillor wish to speak? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you. <laughs> Item three. Let's wait for a change of officer. Welcome, Tom. Item three is the 2021-2022 Community Sponsorship Program. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this month for the uh, Community Sponsorship uh, Program, um, we have one application. Um, and just as uh, by way of an update, um, 
for the financial year so far, we've allocated uh, $6,860 in uh, community sponsorship grants of the $15,000 total budget. Um, the one application received uh, for the month is from the Tatong uh, Memorial Hall Committee. Um, they're looking to stage uh, an event on the 26th of June um, to showcase um, a bit of the local history. Uh, so they're looking to promote um, a whole bunch of memorabilia and displays from local community groups um, dating back to 1905. Um, yeah, something for all of the community, uh, old residents, new residents and people who might be passing through to come and reminisce, find out some information and um, yeah, just generally showcase the community. Um, the recommendation is, that the, uh, is uh, to allocate the full amount requested, which is 500, um, which is at the bottom of page 20. I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Tom. Are there any questions? Councillor Firth. I'm happy to move the recommendation. There's no, no questions. questions. Councillor Gunnarani, you're seconding it. Yes, thank, thank you, Tom. You. you wish to speak, Councillor Firth? I only just say that it's, uh, it's wonderful to see the uh, community of had on um, being proactive and, and running an event like this. It's, uh, they're always fantastic to get together and have a look at what's happened and, and talk about where we're going. So, yes, I'm happy to thank you, Councillor Firth. Is there anyone against the recommendation? No? Councillor Garner Ratney? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I would like to uh, support it. And uh, it's great to see uh, small rural towns uh, and the community is getting access to our community grant funding sponsorship program. Uh, it's a good program to fund. Really, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garner. Any, any other councillor wish to speak? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Item four is the 2021-2022 Annual Grants Program and Major Events Funding Program. And before I ask Tom to speak, uh, Councillor Gunnar Ratney has indicated he has a conflict of interest in relation to two items, the Benalla and District Preschool Partnership and the Benalla Migrant Association Incorporated. So can I have someone move that we exercise those two items, Councillor Davis and Councillor Claridge. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, uh, yes, we are now going to be speaking on all items with the exception of the Benalla and District Preschool Partnership and the Benalla Migrants Association Incorporated. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, so, um, yeah, I'm presenting the 21-22 uh, Annual Grant Program and Major Event Funding. Um, the Community Grant Program allocates $2,500 or up to $2,500 for projects and activities. Um, to assist in building a healthy and, and vibrant uh, community um, across the Benalla municipality. Um, our major event funding is uh, to enable local community groups, clubs or um, organisations from uh, beyond Benalla to seek up to um, $2,000 in funding, not the 1500 that was in the report. Um, we've actually, as discussed last week at the briefing, increased that to $2,000. Um, and it's for events that bring an economic benefit uh, to the town or enhance the image and livability of Benalla. Um, the grant, both uh, the, both of the uh, grant programs are opened on the 7th of February and closed on the 25th of March. Um, I'll talk initially about the community grants and then um, move on to the major events funding after we've completed that section. Uh, so we had 35 applications uh, for a community grant this year, um, totaling in uh, over $80,000. The table on the following page recommends that uh, 30 of those uh, are funded uh, through the um, community grants program. Uh, we've about 28 of those right now. Um, I won't go through the entire table. Um, suffice to say, I'll just highlight a couple um, and, and happy to answer any further questions that you might have. Uh, so we had uh, the Astronomy Club, um, which I think was the first time that they've applied in quite some time, if ever. Uh, which is really pleasing to see that we've got some new groups um, coming and applying for our community grants. Um, really impressive um, application in that it was very strategic in the way that they're looking to build their group um, and that the uh, grant funding towards the purchase of a telescope mount was um, the first of uh, five stages that they'd identified um, in their equipment acquisition plan. Uh, we're also uh, suggesting funding for a youth mental health event uh, for the Benella and District Junior Football League. Um, 
Rotary have kindly offered to assist the Benalla Scout Group uh, to paint the exterior of the Scout Hall. So they have offered to supply the labour and equipment. Um, Gurumbat um, are seeking funding for a shade sale over their um, children's playground. Uh, Lima South Hall uh, are looking to replace a uh, fairly dated air conditioning system within the hall. Um, Maliula are looking for a def defibrillator um, at the at the hall and reserve. Uh, Swan Pool, some outdoor seating, and the Tadong Anglers Group, who I don't believe have applied before, are looking for funding uh, for gazebos and lighting for um, some of their events. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to maybe pause there for the community grants part and answer any questions you might have. Are there any questions from councillors? Councillor Courage. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Tom. Just um, with the Benalla Little Athletics uh, Centre, the line marking, is it just continuous temporary line marking or more, more permanent line marking? I believe it's continuous temporary. I'm not I'm sure that would be an ongoing well, yes. issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Claridge. Are there any other questions? If not, there is a recommendation. A big pardon, sorry. We'll now move on to uh, the major events funding grant application part as well. No problem. Uh, yeah, so um, before we jump there, actually, I'll just quickly mention that we also had the youth participation grants. Um, there were now applications for that this year. Um, for the major event funding, uh, we had seven um, applications, uh, sorry, six, pardon me, um, uh, from the Austin Seven Club for Historic Winton. Uh, the Benella Family Research Group recently held their event, um, which uh, was for the Heritage Festival. Um, the Benella Migrant Camp are uh, looking to do an event uh, called the Walk of Lights, um, where they're going to um, engage an artist or a photographer who is a light painter. Um, the Benella Racing Club are seeking funding for their kids' zone activities. The HDHR Club of Victoria uh, for the 23 uh, National Holden National Show and Shine. Uh, and Let Us Entertain You um, are seeking funding for the 8th uh, Film Festival. Um, happy to answer any questions for those ones. Thank you, Tom. Questions from Council? No questions. Fantastic. Uh, the recommendation uh, is on page 26 for those. If I could have someone move that, Councillor O'Brien and Councillor Davis. Uh, and we'll just again note the exclusion of two of those, which is the Benalla and District Preschool Partnership and the Benalla Migrants Association Incorporated. Councillor O'Brien, do you wish to speak? Um, yeah, just to say thanks, Tom. Um, lots of applications to go through. And I just think it's really good to see such a diverse group of different community groups that we've got in town that are putting their hands up and they've been successful. I think um, especially interesting is with the major um, funding, the Benalla Family Research Group and the Benalla Migrant Camp. I think it's really important in Benalla. We know that we're growing and we're going forward, but we also need to acknowledge what's gone on prior. So I think this is a great opportunity to do that. So I'm really, really happy to support these applications. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Is there anyone against the recommendation? No? Councillor Davis. Yes, thanks, Tom. Um, it must be hard every year going through all these um, applications, but you've done a wonderful job again this year. Um, I think it's pleasing that we can uh, give this amount of money each year to all different, different organisations from different fields but at the end of the day, all these people, all these organisations, all volunteers for their groups. And I just, I'm not going to pick any, any ones out, but I mean, it's good that we can give something to these groups. Possibly they'd have to do a lot of fundraising to raise $2,000 in a lot of cases. It's good that we can give them something um, to support their organisations. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Gunnaratney? Thank you, Chair. Well, I would like to uh, acknowledge what other councillors said, and it's uh, really good to see this much of community interest, especially uh, you know the restrictions and the COVID situation is getting a bit ease. People are getting out and doing things. Uh, a lot of sports clubs are getting back on feet again and applying for grants, and the community groups, and a few major exciting events coming up as well in the town. So it's all good and very positive, and thank you for the hard work. 
passenger going through all this and talking to everyone would be a very hard exercise and a difficult one. Thank you very much. Uh, step up to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Gatterman. Uh, if there's no other council wishes to speak, I'll just quickly say I think it's a great cross section of many community groups in Benalla and surrounds. And as Councillor Davis has put it, a lot of these groups are all voluntary, volunteer based and do a lot of great work for our community. And um, I hope that this money can go a long way to get these projects done for what they're looking to do. So thank you. Put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. So we'll now ask Councillor Gunnar Ratney to thank please you. exit the chamber. Um, so, uh, thank you, councillors. We're now going to um, look at item of the Benalla and District Preschool Partnership and the Benalla Migrant Association Incorporated. Thank you, Tom. No worries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yes, yeah, so the uh, Benalla and District Preschool Partnership, um, Bernard Briggs, uh, is seeking $2,500 towards uh, the purchase of some um, outdoor climbing and activity equipment um, for the young people there. Um, and the Benalla Migrant Association Incorporated are seeking two and a half thousand in funding to stage an Australian Citizenship Day uh, welcome event. Um, so it will be a large community event um, in September this year um, to welcome new Australian citizens and migrants living in the Benalla rural city. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions on those two in particular. Uh, are there any questions from council? No, if there are no questions. Uh, the recommendation will be that the five thousand uh, dollars be granted to the Benalla and District Preschool Partnership and the Benalla Migrants Association Incorporated from the 2021-2022 annual grants program. I could have someone move that recommendation. Councillor Firth, so I have a seconder. Councillor O'Brien, wish to speak, Councillor Firth. Uh, I want to say that uh, that they seem to be two very good um, events to be. Supporting and um, happy to recommend that. Thank you, Councillor Firth. Councillor O'Brien. Oh, oh sorry, I'm... sorry, Councillor O'Brien. Is there anyone against mm -hmm. the recommendation? Sorry. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Only to say that once again, such diverse um, applications. Um, yeah, it's going on in our community. So happy to use support. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wish to speak? Put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. We might invite Councillor Gunnar Atten. Thank you, Councillor Gunnar. Anthony, just for your information, those two, uh, the recommendation for those two items passed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, item five is the Economic Development and Sustainability Department's Activity Report quarter and 31 March 2022. Welcome, Adam Sedler. Thank you, Chair, and evening, councillors. Um, I'd just like to run through a couple of little highlights that I've picked out uh, for the report um, and and, uh, and also probably by uh, some previous comments is that the, the first reporting item there in the report around the business development and support, uh, that is where our business concierge people are working to, to assist uh, in this quarter was a change in restrictions and to emerge and, and, and to con continue to assist businesses in the recovery as needed, as requested. Um, also over this quarter, we had the, uh, the, the final piece of the workforce development uh, re report with the work summit uh, held over at the Glass House uh, with uh, over 70 people at participating, uh, which will now bring that to uh, its completion. Uh, the Outdoor Activation Fund uh, is uh, moving along. Uh, there was some uh, challenges there with supply chains and COVID, and, uh, but its main focus is around uh, street furniture, uh, uh, and um, we've now got that sorted. 
Um, we went out and consulted with the Devonish, Gurumbat and Swanpool community about what we could do out there. Uh, we've reached agreement in, in uh, what they want as a community. Uh, so uh, they're pretty happy with that, I think. Um, uh, and hopefully we'll have the majority of those projects completed uh, by June. There will be a couple that I'll have to seek extension on, um, but that's due to either planning or material supplies. Um, uh, our, uh, within our communications, we've, we've put out a newsletter and continued with multiple media releases and social media updates. Uh, but one pleasing um, result has been the growth in your say and our community engagement uh, digital platform. Uh, we're getting more and more feedback. Uh, some of it's quite frank and fearless, uh, but it, it's it's doing its job, I think, and it's continuing to grow and uh, allow that um, uh, allow the community to be able to be engaged on uh, separate projects and programs that we deliver. Um, over the quarter, we in in the events uh, we saw the Australia Day face to face uh, event come back. Uh, after a hiatus for COVID, uh, uh, held down at VPAC, uh, and it all went very well, as I understand, um, but we had restricted numbers, um, and uh, hopefully next year there'll be no restrictions. Uh, just to move to the gallery and then tourism, uh, the gallery figures uh, remain strong for the quarter. Um, uh, the, the exhibitions, uh, talks and workshops uh, creating a, a reasonable or well, reasonable to good attendance. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty happy about uh, the consistent numbers that are coming. Uh, but the tourism figures are down a bit in comparison to last year. Um, not sure why. Uh, they're down by a couple of percent, uh, as I say. But, and I'm trying to engage with Tourism Northeast a little bit better to see what we can get at, to get a little bit more focus in their marketing programs on uh, Benella and, and surrounds. Uh, the majority of their uh, branding and, and promotion is around high country, mm. and we have a bit of a dilemma here where we, we're pretty flat. Uh, so we're, we're trying to, to work through that. Um, and yeah, then, and that's it. Councillors, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, are there any questions? Councillor Firth. <clears throat> yeah, and with regards to what you were just talking about, the tourism down 2%, this year as opposed to that last year, it doesn't seem that way, you know. I have to admit it's a little bit uh, confusing. You drive down the streets of Benalla, I look at the, you know, the visitor information centre has been temporarily relocated. Every time I pull up, I seem to see some people knocking the door looking for where that is. It's just a feel, and I've certainly got no data to work by, but um, it's pretty hard to get a car park around here too. So. It, is that the feel of the, is there um, uh, any explanation for it? Yeah, through you, Chair. Uh, uh, Councillor Firth, 100%, that's the case now. We had a, 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 a cracking Easter uh, with a lot more activity around, but this is the first, the third quarter report. Mm. So, and and um, uh, I thought uh, uh, myself, we were, were down in visitors uh, just in and around January and February. Uh, particularly in comparison in comparison to other uh, regional centres, Bright, Beechworth, that type of thing. Uh, there was a couple of visits uh, that I did personally to those where they, they, you, you couldn't get a park in anywhere. Uh, here we were clear. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's a better feel now for sure, Councillor. Just a follow-up question, just, and I know that it's not directly with regards to this report, but... We had our fourth instalment of, um, of rate notices go out recently and the newsletter wasn't with them. Is there any reason for that newsletter not being with the rate notices? Um, there was no intention to put a newsletter in the rate notices. Uh, so you were talking about the rate reminders? No. The quarterly instalment. So that only goes out as to people that still it's have quarter that still has rates to pay. Mm. So people that have paid those rates don't get it. That'd be no, that'd be, no, it was just a quarter. No, but if you've paid your rates fully in the first quarter, you don't get a reminder to pay your rates again. Mm. Uh, so it's not a very equitable system when 
trying to deliver newsletters uh, because we could have 25% of our rate payers paid up in full, 50%, 75%, I don't know. Uh, so we would only be, say if it was 50%, we would only be sending that newsletter out to 50% of our rate payers. So it's it's not a, for me, it's not an equ equitable vehicle to deliver of that type of news. Yeah. Councillor Firth, Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Adam, I think it's always good to look at that data that's coming through. So just going back to their comment about tourism and the numbers being down a bit, do you think this is perhaps an indication to us as a council that we need to maybe ramp up what we're doing, not just sit on our laurels and say, oh, well, they're just coming anyway, they love us. We really need to ramp up what we're doing, think of something new and more innovative to kind of bring people in because I think a lot of those other towns are really advertising and doing a whole lot more things. They, they do summer, winter, spring, autumn kind of festival things to bring people in. And, um, yeah, I'm just interested in your thoughts on that, please. Well, th through you, Chair. Yes, Councillor, that's a, a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a broader discussion uh, because there's budget implications, mm -hmm. resource implications. We, we commit the majority of our promotional budget to North uh, Tourism Northeast. Mm -hmm. Uh, therefore, in regards to, in my view, therefore, in, in regards to uh, promotion and tourism in our current model, uh, they're my main go-to. Yeah. Uh, so, that, uh, yes, we could do a, 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 a thousand other things if if we uh, were prepared uh, yeah. or, and had the capacity yeah. to, to allocate more resource. Uh, the options would be endless if the resources were endless, yeah. but they're not. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, and one of the things that I'd like to do in the next uh, coming months is is review uh, uh, how 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 we collaborate with Tourism North East yeah. uh, and, and ensure we're getting value for money from it. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, short answer is yes, but lots of complications yeah. through that. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Councillor Dabbs. Thank you. Um, um, and an uh, observation of the question, the observation is it looks like the centre of the movies is going quite well. Figures there look good. Um, and my question is, it comes back to what Council Purpose was just talking about. When you travel around Vanilla at weekends and after hours, there seems to be a lot of people around. New faces, I don't know. Um, the question to you is, um, COVID hasn't gone away completely. There's a lot of businesses in Vanilla that are still finding it hard after COVID to mm -hmm. reinvent themselves. And there's businesses that are, that are doing real well but can't get staff to, to, to man their operations like bakeries and food places seem to be having trouble with, uh, with staff. Um, are we doing any work with, with those people that, that maybe um, are struggling um, after COVID to get their businesses up and running again? Through you, Chair. Um, Councillor, yes, we are. Um, and uh, it's more of a reactive. Uh, they've got a come to us to, to identify their issues and their challenges and be tackled on a case-by-case case, uh, scenario. Uh, uh, I haven't got the detail on who it is, and if I had, I couldn't divulge that anyway, uh, and, would, and wouldn't. Um, in regards to uh, uh, can't, uh, lack of ability to attract uh, people, uh, that's, that's, that's a sort of Australia-wide mm -hmm. scenario at the moment. Uh, uh, I, we could put a lot of time, money and effort into that for not much return. Uh, so it's, it's just trying to make sure in those uh, in gay employment uh, situations that they're advertising in all the right places, trying to help them if they need any um, sort of sectoral expertise, so that management in technical manuals or, or reports or, or news articles or uh, make sure they're on seek. Uh, you know, is, is, you know, make sure they're they're trying to put it push out as much as they can on social media. That type of thing is sort of generic advice, uh, Councillor. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Councillor Claridge. Uh Yeah, thanks, Adam. <clears throat> Just getting back to what Councillor Firth was indicating about the amount of visitors we seem to be attracting since, I say, probably not this quarter since Easter, but <clears throat> a lot of them. I don't know whether it's through Tourism Northeast, but a lot of them are obviously coming to look at the, the artwork. And I've engaged with a couple of groups who were Asian um, 
people who had virtually no English. So is, it, is that something we should be looking at? Maybe having some sort of bilingual, multilingual signs to help people who come to Vanilla to even if they're pointing to the tourist information or I don't know how we do it, but is that something we've ever thought about being more helpful in bilingual areas? That's where you, Chair. Um, I, I don't know if we've ever addressed that before, uh, and, and I will really take that part of the question on notice and, and, and get back to you. Um, again, uh, I think we need to have a look at the the, the visitor data that we have that we can access, access, and see what percentage of that uh, is um, visitors with with other language, uh, and then possibly. There's a there's an answer there. Um, um, again, yes, we can do it. Uh, we can put uh, different languages on uh, in our signage on our streetscape. Uh, what languages? Uh, I'm unsure. So I'd have to do a little bit more research. And, and uh, so yeah, can I take that yep. sort of the majority on the, on that on notice, please? Thank you, Councillor Gunner. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sandler, for the report. Um, my question is from page 28, Outdoor Activation Fund. Yep. Um, the, part, uh, the second paragraph says, uh, the majority of the projects located in and around the central business district to satisfy government's funding criteria. Um, what is that? Uh, that means we can't go much of that grant to rural towns. We need to spend in the better lab. From the sounds of it, so what's what's that funding criteria that we have to meet that we can't do much to our rural towns? Uh, through you, Chair, um, uh, the major criteria that drives that uh, position is that it was a business activation fund. Uh, so the activities had to be there to assist uh, business activation. Uh, the majority of our businesses are in the CBD in Vanilla. Uh, we were able to push it out, uh, as I said, to uh, Gurumbat, Devonish, and um, Swanpool, uh, but, but with within limits. Uh, so you know that, that uh, uh, they got ten percent of the funding, you know, or thereabouts, equivalent. Uh, but that was the driving criteria. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Councillor Gunnar. Uh, if there are any further questions from Council, there's a recommendation on page thirty-seven. If I could have move that, Councillor Hearn. And second, Councillor O'Brien. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Hearn? Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just through you, I'd like to thank Adam on a great um, report. Adam, you seem to be doing a lot of work. We are very thankful for everything you do. You cover so many things. I've looked here and the things that you cover are just phenomenal. It's also one little thing I noticed, which I thought was really good, and it's only a minor little thing that wasn't mentioned, was the fact that the Kanbanji weed is under control. I thought that was really, really, really good. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Hearn. Councillor O'Brien? Uh, yes, thank you, um, Chair. Um, yeah, Adam, huge report and... Um, Lots of numbers to shuffle around there. But I think um, despite COVID and despite all of those restrictions, it's just an indication we're seeing movement. People are, are wanting to get out and about and wanting to explore the regional and rural areas. So um, I know heaps of people are going out to Gurumbat and Devonish for the site. I love. It's just amazing. So, um, yep, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Anyone wish to speak against the recommendation? Anyone wish to speak for the recommendation? Councillor Davis. Just to go to follow on from the Mayor. Um, Adam, you do a great job. You've got a, a big area and a big scope to work, and we've just seen here tonight how you've been able to freely answer questions mm. that have been asked. And um, so obviously, that you're right across the subject. Thank I do you. hope in the future that you may have some little underlings to give you a bit more, <laughs> bit more around in the future. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Any other councillor wish to speak? Not. Go to the vote. All those in favour? Gary, thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Thank you. Adam. Hi. 
Thank Item you. six is the People and Performance Department Activity Report for the quarter end 31 March 2022. And welcome to Janine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, as detailed, the People and Performance Department report for the quarter end of 30th of March. I've just got a couple of highlights in mind. Firstly, in the customer relations area, um, down to dot point two, you'll see there's quite an increase in the CRMS numbers that have been coming in this quarter. Um, this is um, mainly because of the staff registering the caddy bags now, and there's been about 700 of those in that quarter. So every time someone comes in for the caddy bags, they're actually raising a CRMS to capture that um, information. And also there was a lot of calls um, about the storm around the end of January. Um, over to land information certificates. Um, these have increased 24% and that's attributed to the new developments that are going ahead. Um, over on page 41, COVID, we're very happy to see that most restrictions have now eased across um, most of the work sites, community services, I believe, are still required to wear masks, but not to QR code sign in now. Um, volunteer development, we've had a couple of new L2P mentors um, and a litter gatherer. And also page 42, National Volunteer Week will commence on Monday from the 16th to the 22nd. So the volunteer development coordinator and the volunteer coordinators of each program are working together to organise their individual functions and there's been small gifts and certificates ordered for the volunteers um, in recognition of the great work they do. Um, down to the Sir Edward Weary Dunlop Learning Centre. Again, we're happy to see COVID restrictions are eased and the groups are slowly returning to the library. Um, in February, we welcomed a new group of mums and bubs. There was about 11 mums and babies, and that was a very successful program. And I'd like to take you to the recommendation on page 44. Thank you, Janine. Uh, are there any questions? Councillor Berry. I just have one, Janine. Mm -hmm. Regarding the, um, the caddy bags, yes. why do we do a CRMS on... Um, this information was just being recorded on a spreadsheet, so we wanted to keep it in line with all the other customer requests. So we can just, the staff can just report on it better. There's not a group out there hoarding bags or anything? No, we hope not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Claridge. Are there any other questions? Councillor Hearn. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, Janine, just um, clarification, if you don't mind. Workplace incidents, I gather they're minor. As there was no claims, were covered claims? They are minor. Yep. They're, um, well, no incident is minor, but um, they're just back injuries, hand injuries, insect stings, insect, insect stings, um, just just things like that every day. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Um, while we're on that uh, grab, um, Janine, um, training applications. Yes. Um, yeah, what, what's happened there? Are we, are we doing more tra in, in, in house training and therefore the numbers have dropped there? Or in The December quarter, we did um, first aid training. So there was about 50 people that went through that. That was quite large. So that's why that figures up. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Are there any other questions? If not, there is a recommendation <coughs> on page 44. If I could have someone move that recommendation, Councillor Hearn, second. Uh, Councillor Gunnarani, do you wish to speak, Councillor Hearn? Uh, just to say thank you very much. It looks like we're ticking over quite good in our library, etc. So thank you very much, Jane. Councillor Gunnarani. Thank you, Chair. Uh, any councillor wishing to speak against the recommendation? Any other councillors speaking for? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you, Jane. Thanks. 
Uh, item 7 is the Finance Department Activity Report for the quarter ends 31 March 2022. Welcome back, Kathy. Thank you. The uh, March quarter ending 31st March was pretty busy. Um, it's the time that we're doing the preparation of the budget and um, pulling together the um, long-term financial plan as well and also trying to align with... Um, forecasting for the end of the quarter, which forecasting has taken quite a bit of time in the COVID environment um, with the closures and openings and closures and openings and additional grants and, and different things. So that's been fairly busy. My highlight, obviously, is on page 46 where I say that we have a total of $26 million in the bank. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> um, and, it, and it's a problem that I'm happy to have. But... Um, You'll unfortunately see the interest rates down the side that are very low, um, but it's better to have the money in the bank than have the no money. Um, and so we're managing um, investments and we're looking at the delivery of programs, um, obviously. And you'll see that there's quite a number of um, investments that we're, we're doing for quite a lengthy term period. You'll see that 273 days is a funny term period, but if we do 270, we get a lower rate, so we go for a bit more um, to pick up whatever rates we can, and we monitor that very seriously. Uh, at times, at the end of the month, we get payments in that we would have liked to have moved out. So when you see uh, the subtotal for the operating account at 10 million, it's because something's coming that we didn't know was coming in, um, because we would have had it moved out to get us some more interest if we had have known. But um, I'm happy to say we are cashed up at the moment and we are managing our cash um, on the best rates that we can do with uh, mm -hmm. terms in the 273 days. Uh, on the other point, the revenue and property people have been very busy because the March period is when we're trying to finalise the valuations and get all of our supplementary um, items in. And as we know, Benell's had a very active period with houses and, and construction of new dwellings. So, uh, January, February, we try and get all of the items through to the valuers so that we can include it in our forecast figures for our budget um, as well. And we're, we're very happy that they've nearly finished all of the VCAT um, challenges on valuations. There's just one that we're waiting to see, which may have an impact on the figures that we receive um, for our supplementary valuations. But overall, we're, we're coming in higher with our supplementary valuations, so that's a positive. Uh, they were my main highlights. There's a recommendation on page 49. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions? No questions. Uh, if there's no questions, can I have someone move the recommendation? Councillor Gunnar Ratney, seconder. Councillor Davis, you should speak, Councillor Gunnar Ratney. Um, just briefly, Chair, it's a good report, and so thanks for as always. And thank you. And good work managing the finances. And the best interest that you get in this market. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Gunnar. Any Councillor Davis? Yes, thank you, Kevin. <coughs> it's all positive and it's great to have so much money in the bank. <laughs> we've, we've struggled over the years, but to have this this here at the moment is great news. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else wishing to speak for the recommendation? If not, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Item 8 is the Community Department Activity Report for quarter end 31 March 2022. And welcome, James Archibald. Thank you, Great to see you, you in person. <laughs> yes, I think it's been a while since I've been here in person. Um, just a few highlights uh, from my report to uh, mention to you. Um, the first is that uh, with Ivan, our rural outreach officer, you'll notice that his stats are significantly less than they have been previously. That's because, unfortunately, Ivan has not been well over the quarter. Um, so, hence, although, as is true to fashion for Ivan, he still managed to keep in contact with uh, many of his um, clients, but, of course, he hasn't really taken on many new clients because he hasn't been in good health. Um, but during the quarter, just looking at um, the third dot point down, um, just for your information, we have distributed uh, um, through the COVID relief program to 10 households, which included a number of pets and children and adults. Um, these were all through community referrals. 
Um, and of course, I, I did want to highlight that this is still available, um, you know, seven days a week, um, you know, to our community, um, obviously targeting people who are um, isolating due to COVID. Um, we have opened up through the $300,000 through the Australian Government's Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Program grants of up to $50,000 for rural communities. Um, they, they opened in late March and closed uh, next week. And it is pleasing to see that we've had a couple submitted already and Tom's been very busy out there. Um, there are, just looking at um, the figures today, there are nine in the wings. So, uh, you know, that's very pleasing. Um, just going over the page, it's also pleasing to note um, that during the quarter, the youth team has been very successful um, with two grants, continued freezer funding, which for the first time in a number of years has actually increased. Um, I think it's been, you know, 10, maybe 15 years since we've had an increase in freezer funding, so that's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. And we've also been successful in securing Engage funding, which is a new uh, state government initiative, which will actually mean that we can resource the Live for Life program without um, it being, um, you know, always a problem for us, as well as many other youth initiatives. So that's, that's a, a real win for our community. Um, and just on that, it is also very pleasing that the Live for Life program has successfully recruited large numbers of young people. So um, in, over the quarter, 16 young people from Manella P12 and 21 from FCJ. And I think you would have heard from Tom earlier that there was a very successful launch today, which I'll give you more details um, about next quarter. Um, it's also pleasing, and you'll see by the photo there on uh, page 52, that in March, we um, launched the new L2P vehicle, um, thanks to the wonderful sponsors, um, Benalla Toyota, Winton Motor Raceway and Benalla Auto Club, and of course ourselves um, supporting that program. And it's also wonderful that we have um, were able to purchase the other vehicle so that we've now got two vehicles at hand, which makes it much easier for the young people. Um, there's a vehicle available for driving tests. So, you know, that's been a, a really successful program. Um, just highlighting too, maternal and child health is um, ticking along very nicely. There's a lot more stability um, in the workforce there. Um, and they have run very successful first-time parents groups and in the throes of um, last quarter um, focusing on developing a first-time dads group, which has actually just started and doing very well. And it's also pleasing to note that um, integrated family services um, were re-accredited in January. That was quite an onerous process because we um, transitioned to the National Standards for Disability Services as well as adhering to the Human Services Standards. And it was really pleasing that the auditors, auditors who came um, to do our um, service were very complimentary, saying that, um, in fact, they were saying they'd like to come back and do us next time because they found it um, really rewarding, which is always nice for us to hear. Um, just going over... Um, supported play group has very pleasingly had an increase um, because, of course, during COVID restrictions, it was very difficult for people to participate. But it's also, and you can see from the photos there, it's pleasing that we've had a number of culturally and linguistically diverse community members participating, um, newer residents, um, which has been, they've been really appreciative of the gentle approach um, of supported play group. So the photos there show um, some of the kids at the Easter Bonnet Parade that we had and also a wonderful um, trip to Mansfield Zoo. Um, in Aged and Disability, we've had a number of transition sessions with our staff, um, with three held over the quarter and obviously more happening now. Um, and we have also had started last quarter to have, to have successful uh, sessions with the um, new providers taking over the service as we exit out at the end of June. Um, the Info Hub, the Age Well Info Hub, is continuing um, at the library and at the market. Um, and also, uh, last quarter, the Age Friendly Group ran a very successful, you might have seen that wonderful Banala Treasures article that they did in the paper, which was very well received in the community um, using some of our seniors festival funding. Um, and I think we're keen, if anyone's got any suggestions for activities to do for this year's senior seeing this festival, we'd be really pleased to hear your suggestions. Um, just going over the page, um, perhaps 
just talking of a highlight, we did have a very successful, um, as uh, Councillor O'Brien would know, uh, workshop with our Benalla Health and Wellbeing Partnership Group, which is a very active group um, with representatives from a variety of services helping us um, with the development of our municipal public health and wellbeing plan, which we're really fine tuning, um, ready to go back to the department. But I think um, you know that was a very successful um, session. So I'll just draw you um, to, I'm oh, happy to take any questions, otherwise. Um, Thank you, Jane. Are there any questions? Councillor Firth. Uh, yeah, thanks, Joan. That, that's a big report. You, you guys must be getting really well wiped. There's lots of money being mm -hmm. given out. Grants mm -hmm. are all over the place. It's fantastic. But it's also wonderful to see non-financial things such as the Live for Life. I remember in 2016-17, we had a, a launch and, you know, I think we were, they were struggling to get eight representatives there. So um, the question is, with that, induction events out of the 16 and 21, 37, uh, did they actually sign up or like were they just attendees at the uh, launch? My understanding through you, Mr Chair, is that they are signed up and it's Fantastic. because it's because of, you know, the reputation of the program and the interest and it has over a number of years just built that momentum. It is, yeah, and, and a short number of years, really, like, you know, seven, eight, Okay, five years time. They it, it just goes to show that the, the wonderful um, successfulness of this program. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Firth. Uh, any other questions from councillors? No further questions. Uh, the recommendation is on page fifty nine. If I could have someone move that recommendation, Councillor Hearn and Councillor Firth. Wish to speak, Councillor Hearn. Uh, just to say thank you, Jane, for all the work you do. I'm sure it's been a Hard quarter, especially with what's happening in the Asia part. Um, and congratulations on the Live for Life. That's fantastic. Thank you, Councillor yeah, Hearn. Councillor Firth? I would say thank you. Is anyone wishing to speak against the recommendation? Anyone wishing to speak for the recommendation? Councillor Davis. Yes, thank you, Joan. I don't hear any, I don't hear any rumblings out in the, in the field. It's, it's all positive, your work. It's good to see that we've got two cars for the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. for the young drivers now and um, I had a phone call from Ivan Lister there with and said aren't you aren't you on sick leave? He said no while I can speak and, and listen and I've got a phone to me here he said I'm, I'm on deck. Thank you Councillor Davis. Any other councillor wish to speak? Councillor Gunnar Ratney. Thank you Chair. I would like to appreciate the report and the, and the great work in the community that you've done um, especially we talk about the dad, dad groups and how uh, the diverse communities can engage in the, uh, in the childhood groups. And that's really positive. And talking about the cars that's been uh, allocated for the L2P, I believe some of, or one of them, or the both of them are hybrid cars. From my yes. herd. Well, I think one Terry. is the latest mm -hmm. one. Yes, yes. the newer one is. One is. Yeah. So that's, that's again great. And uh, yeah, good to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gunnar Ratney. Uh, Jane, I'd just like to say it's a great report. To congratulations to you and your team, and it's great to see Freezer is getting some more money in the bank. That's great. Yeah. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Uh, item nine is the Lakeside Precinct Accessibility Access Working Group. <coughs> I'll hand this one over to Don Tasmani. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As councillors are aware, uh, through the LRCI. Fund. Um, we have about $100,000 allocated for enhancements, for enhancement works um, around the mural, uh, predominantly to uh, improve accessibility from Mayor Street down to the uh, down to that precinct. We had developed a concept plan that we took out for community consultation that culminated in an on-site uh, meeting with the community on Wednesday, the 30th of March this year, um, and I believe there was some. Good discussion held, and I think most councillors were in attendance. Um, from that meeting, um, it was very clear that it was a very passionate topic, subject, and that there would be further work required from the council. Uh, keeping in mind what we put before the council was purely a concept for discussion. Um, as I've said, uh, following that meeting, um, our intention is to um, 
form a working group uh, with a few individuals to further assess what we should do in that particular uh, precinct. Uh, what we are proposing is that the membership of what we are calling Lakeside Precinct Accessibility Access Working Group, it's a mouthful, I, I realise that, uh, should comprise of the Mayor, nominated representatives of the Benalla Rural City Community and up to two Council officers. The Working Group will be chaired by the Mayor. In the recommendation, uh, we do list uh, five community members um, and I believe that the Mayor has been in contact with each of those uh, individuals and they are keen to obviously represent various sectors of the community, um, which is actually quite pleasing. Mr Chair, I'm happy to take the rest of the report in terms of reference as read, but um, also take any questions from the councillors. No, I'll mention that at the end. Yeah. Uh, questions, Councillor Claridge. Yeah, thanks, Don. Um, is there a, a, a length of time that this group will remain for, or is it until the project is completed? Thank you. Just through the chair, this is some, what we call a sunset committee. Um, and I would think there'd be probably two or three meetings. Uh, the initial concept, talk about the meeting, talk about a couple of options, and then fine tune that. But um, I would think a matter of a couple of months, to be quite honest. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Claridge. Uh, any other questions from Council? Councillor Davis? If there's not, I'd like to move. Uh, before you do that, Councillor Davis, um, just with regards to the recommendation, councillors have been provided with a uh, just an amendment to the recommendation. Uh, it just lists five the five names, which is was different to the document provided at the start of the week. Um, so I'll just read out um, <coughs> the recommendations, points one, two and three are the same. Uh, the names listed uh, will be Susan Campbell, OMA, John Hanlon, Cheryl Ann Miner, David Moore, and Cheryl Stubbs. Just wanting to confirm you have to support that recommendation. Yes. Councillor Davis, yes. Councillor Hearn seconding. You wish to speak, Councillor Davis? Just briefly, um, I'd like to, to thank the CEO, the way he, um, he presented the report. Um, it was on the concept plans originally. Um, and I'd also like to, to thank um, our Mayor and, um, and Councillor Don Burke for the way they, they conducted themselves at that meeting. I really, um, at times it was, uh, it, people got a bit boisterous, but it, uh, I think at the end of the day, you, you, you two of you really handled it very well. And I think as councillors, we listen, as staff listen. This is why we've got this committee. And I've known a lot of those people for a long time, and I think um, um, that we'll end up with a really good result. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holmes. Councillor Holmes. I'd just like to, through you, Mr Chair, I'd just like to say that um, I've spoken to these five community members and I'm very happy that they're all quite excited about coming on to um, this committee or group, working group, and they're, they're going to bring their views. Each of them have different um, ideas and it's going to actually... Open, open for a good, good couple of meetings to really sort out what we need, want, and Vanilla should have. So I'd just like to thank them for agreeing to participate with this, and um, thank the council for putting it together so that we could do it. Thank you, Councillor. Any councillor speaking against the recommendation? Any councillor wishing to speak for the recommendation? Councillor Gunner Atney. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> no, I like to. Uh support the recommendation and I think it's a it's a good move, uh, a good outcome from that meeting to form this committee. Uh, the committee, I think it's a very representative committee, have experts in there, the landscape architect and they've more been involved with this uh, mural for a long time, being a creator of it and there are other people who can uh, add to the history and the accessibility part of the, the project. I think it's, it will get all the skills uh, on the table. With, Get a good outcome, which everyone can, which everyone can uh, agree. I hope. And thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Gunner. Any, any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, I'll just say I, I concur with Councillor Davis's uh, comments around the engagement um, at that uh, community consultation on the day. It was uh, very well handled by the mayor and deputy mayor uh, and councillors in attendance. And um, from that, as we can see, we've now got a working group to work through some of these concepts and discussions and ideas and look forward to seeing a report to council very soon. Uh, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. 
Item 10 is councillors' expenses for the quarter end 31 March 2022. We'll take that as read. And if there are any questions, I'm sure Mr. Barber and Mr. Testoni will answer those questions. No questions? I just I have one. Marriage. <clears throat> um, I noticed that the, um, the money left in the uh, Professional Development Fund is getting pretty skinny. If um, we get towards the end of the financial year and we need some more money, is it available? We'll take that on notice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead, Mr. Thank you. Just through the chair, um, we do try and stick to the budget as closely as we can. But obviously, during emergency situations or uh, times of uh, where there's something important that does come up, we can consider uh, amendments to the budget. We always use the CEO's credit card. <laughs> Thank someone, you. someone has to. <laughs> Nobody else yes, exactly. Thank you, councillors. <laughs> Are there any other questions? If not, can I have someone move that recommendation? Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Hearn. Do you wish to speak, Councillor O'Brien? Oh, no, thank you. Councillor Hearn. No, no. Anyone speaking against? Anyone speaking for? Put that to the vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you. Item 11 and a popular one, the CEO credit card for the quarter end 31 March 2022. We'll take it as read. Are there any questions? No questions. Can I have someone move that recommendation, Councillor Hearn? Second to Councillor Gunnar Atney. You should speak, Councillor Hearn. No, thank you. You should speak, Councillor Gunnar Atney. No, Anyone yeah. against the recommendation? Anyone for the recommendation? Put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. We'll close the meeting at 6.41. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. 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 Thank you.